Hi there guys, this is Emmanuel Can from Thoughtful Gaming, bringing you another guide for your startup. It's time focused on research, what will give you the best research early on in the game, and um, yeah, what should you go for early on to make your research optimized to, to help you to a very good start. For this I have created the Genius Plant Union Science Directorate. There's more research alternatives and has more leaders available. Um, yeah, they are very intelligent natural physicists and so on. I'll show you why. Like, if you really like research, then it would make sense to choose intelligent. But don't forget to build ships, otherwise it will kill you. Intelligent raises your chance of getting something I hope to get now. Let's see. Um, special researchers, that is. So your first thing is... Um, we have... Our guys here, planet um, neural node in the thought spark system. Uh, look at the empire tab. Look at the leaders. Look at your scientists. What have they? They have very good traits, and you can see this is spark of genius, and this is triggered by something like intellectual. So um, you have a higher chance of getting these if you have an intellectual population. So if you want to play a game focused on research, go for this. For the others, there's also pretty good tips in here. <laughs> so um, let's start. Let's start with a technology menu. Like that's, this is the most important menu for, uh, for researching. And you also have science ships, which uh, we'll co uh, cover later. So um, you have these special traits here. Expertise biology, expertise particles. And you can see you have the special research um, departments here. You have physics, physics, society and engineering. Now, um, these expertise fields will be hidden mostly, like the green ones, mostly under society, the blue ones mostly under physics and the brown ones mostly under engineering. So. Um, this will be good mostly for their physics or, um, in that case, society research. But um, you can swap them around. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't need time or something. You don't lose anything. So if you might find someone like you might find an area of interest like with that expertise biology in here or in here, then you can swap this guy over and just let him research it and gain the research the additional research speed biology so swapping around is definitely recommended it doesn't hurt anything and you should definitely do it so um these are the leaders we have they're not bad this guy is really good he gets 10 percent research on everything let's look at the readers we could recruit Two more roamers, good ship captains, and someone with expertise statecraft. Now, if I had found one more guy here with spark of genius, I definitely have recruited him. And the other guys would have been put into a spaceship because that is so good you can fire guys over that. It would be worth the 50 influence to get that guy. Um, So after you've checked the recruiting panel, so to say, for geniuses, and um, you have to do some tech choices, like the most important tech choice in the Asimov patch, this will go away in the next patch, in the Heinlein patch, is this. Like, just take the New Worlds Protocol. It is very important to get this. It may not spawn, like, in the next instance of this. So how this works is you get a number of techs at the start, the first um, set is um, hard-coded in a way that the New Worlds Protocol is always in it. But in the next session, like when you research the next technology, you won't get this. And then you won't be able to colonize anything. So, um, <laughs> all the way, take this. It's, it's, uh, it would be limiting your play if you don't take this. So, um, you should take this and on the other hand, like if you're playing on the Heinlein patch already, um, look at the other stuff. Like monthly influence would be pretty good, even at the start. A biolab, you wouldn't need that probably, as research isn't that important early on. 
Also, the army upkeep minus 10%, you don't have a really big army. So, in that case, I'll definitely go for the planetary unification to get that plus one influence very early on first. But now we're on the Azimuth patch. Um, we're taking the New Worlds Protocol to be able to expand now. Next is physics. Um, there's always some technologies here. Assist research is something really nice which can be done by your sh science ships later on. But you shouldn't take it at the start. Like it's it's mostly there to as a choice, but it doesn't make sense at the start. At the start your science ships will be used to survey systems and you won't have time for them to assist research on a planet. Later on this can be very powerful, but only later on. Now, here we have some other stuff and you would think like expertise particles. We get a bonus on that. Let's let's take the fusion power, but um, the fusion reactor is needed in ships, so it's a... I'm split on that. I, I wouldn't take it at the start. I, at the start, I would only take technologies like that bring you forward in these three departments and food-wise to make you grow a bit. Maybe even research, but that is very expensive at the start. Go for growth. So the solar panel network would be the thing I'd start. This is like an orbital network that you can build in your spaceport. You have a spaceport at the start and it brings you 460 minerals. It brings you three energy credits like per month. So I take this here, even if this guy doesn't have the research speed for it. So our genius, what would he go for? Um, as I said, like there's no investment needed. These technologies are good at the start. Uh, and that don't cost anything too. So we have 5% more minerals here. Minerals is a key area of the game. So um, for growth, I would either go that or if you can afford it, um, the engineering facility. But you should really increase your minerals and food first to get your growth going. These are all ship technologies and missiles, but you don't have any enemies right now. So we don't need these. Uh, go for the go for the stuff you need to grow, and if you find an enemy, then you can uh, look what military or weapon techs you get. So we'd go for the powered exoskeletons here, definitely. Now, if there are purple choices in there, you should consider these as well. These are rare technologies, but at the start they won't usually pop up. So they would be framed in purple here. This will be purple. It will say rare technology and there's usually something very special in it that can be very, very good. It can also be useless, but mostly it's pretty good. And you should always consider to take these. Um, so as I already said, swap your leaders for bonuses if that is accessible. Like we have here like this industry guy. We could look if we have another industry guy here. We don't have one. If we would research something in statecraft, we could take him. Let's look. Yeah, we had something in statecraft, the, the propaganda broadcasts. And if we, we would have taken that, we could have considered taking him in. Like, because you, you would build a second science ship usually at the start to have more uh, survey and research capacity in the universe, like to learn more of the universe. And then you could, like, anyway, re uh, get one more researcher for that starting boost, so to say. And um, also for more areas you can swap in and out for, for uh, a generally nicer research. So, um, what are the research ships, the science ships, good for? Take like select one of your science ships then uh, like right click somewhere probably very close because it will start there and then make survey system so it will research all the planets in your system we'll look for anomalies that can give you research bonuses and all kinds of funny wins that can give you good or sometimes even bad things but mostly good like think of these as if you've played civilization as the as the little huts you get there but you get to make choices so it's not totally like the little huts but you can make choices that would lead somewhere um, somewhere special or you would just get bonuses anyways what this does is it gives you projects that you can research in the situation log pop, pop up here 
and you have to, to look at either you want to research these or not. We'll just start the game a bit, just to um, maybe find some of these. Now this is what you do with the research ships, but you also have um, like a military fleet and a construction ship. Now with a construction ship, you should always follow your research ship and just move it along the, the rough line of the research ship because at the start you want to discover as quickly as possible some comets or some planets that have resources on them and you want to build space stations there quickly. So it pays to have the construction ship near and like just instantly build these space stations. What you shouldn't forget as well is like you should build here like hydrophonics farms or uh, here maybe power plant, like these, the planetary buildings always have preference over the others, but, um, because they are cheaper than the, than the space stations, but yet you should definitely um, not ignore these space, space stations and follow with a construction ship directly after the research ship in systems that you control. Uh, but we were also with the military fleets. Now what, you sh what should you do with them? Like you have that area, area where you can usually see what's in the systems. Like you have a rough uh, overview. Is there a habitable planet in the system? Is there some space monster in the system? It's inside your scanning range. What you would go for with a military fleet is you would go outside and look in these systems if there is a, re uh, a planet there that you may be able to colonize later or if there's a space monster in there. There's a space monster in there that is aggressive. I wouldn't send in a research ship there. It would be too costly to lose it and the researcher. So check these before you go there with your with your research fleet and uh, just have a just have a look, have a rough look. Now, if you find these anomalies, let's make it a little faster. Maybe we'll find some. Situation updated. And we've paused already. So there's really some stuff happening here. Like we've come across a intelligent, intelligent alien life. And we have an encounter with the alpha aliens. So this is also part of the research. Let's stop this again. The first thing is we've discovered there's two mining possible here. There's also three research possible here. So if you want a research station, then you should build a research station here, around that. But it is preferable to, to, to start with uh, minerals, energy stations, just to, just to get your core growth going. Later on, build a research station here. It will totally pay off. So let's build that mining station here first. And... Um, yeah. Now you have one of these projects here. You could investigate the alpha aliens. And what this means is like you, you learn to communicate with the other aliens. This will need research and it will uh, use six months of society research. What this also means is, we have chosen this, this will come to a halt. Let's just select the project, research it. Now you can see here, there's no progress bar anymore, and this will stop until we've investigated the Alpha Aliens. Now why should you do that? You don't want to talk to them? Fine. Well, if you research it, you get a whole lot of influence for it very often. So you should definitely go for research. Like at the start, at the first patch, this wasn't the case, so it was considered useless often. But now you have a chance to get influence for it, and it is very valuable. Like to recruit leaders, to get some edicts going, and all of that stuff. Now let's have a look here. <clears throat> We've encountered some aliens here. We cannot take them out yet. It wouldn't be advisable. Now let's fly over and just say like um, <clears throat> we wouldn't fly there with our research ship. It's too dangerous. There is a lot of other systems where you should fly with your re research ships and now there's a special thing for you. You're competing against the AI, right? So um, what you should do is, as early as possible, you should fly into 
the more remote systems here. Alienation you can still model counted, updated. That you can still reach. Otherwise, the following may happen. An AI ship comes over here. Let's say to this system. <clears throat> Surveys the system and uncovers an anom anomaly on a planet. Now, if the, the AI scans the planet and uncovers an anom anomaly, you won't get that anomaly anymore. Like that, planet is flagged as anomaly done. So, it is very advisable to go for that early on. Now, if the AI doesn't find the anomaly, you can still find it. And um, <clears throat> there's that, but like if you're totally paranoid about that and playing a really aggressive race, then you should close borders and as soon as possible fly out of there and like research or survey all of the systems um, to find out about possible anomalies. Because then like the AI can, can't assess your area, they can't go there and, and research. With open borders they can. And uh, you will get like the neutral anomalies or even fly into their systems and research there if that is possible. But I'd go for the neutral systems first. They might have already researched their, um, their own systems, like found more aliens, like in this case, some kind of space creatures that are not, like, we cannot communicate with, but it will spark other interesting choices. So that is about anomalies. And like, if you're paranoid about <laughs> your anomalies, yeah, then close your borders. It will give you, um, negative demo diplomatic relations but uh, if you're warlike anyways then yeah it's okay for you it's okay but i would be quite um careful with that if you have a warlike civilization near to you don't close borders to them they might attack you with a force that you cannot stop even at the start so um and about the attack is there is something Let's try to actually follow here. Now oh, you've seen our research ship has already uncovered more resources here. And we're now flying over here with our military fleet. Something I want to um, show to you. Where is it? Here. Now we'll assign a leader not that it is advi advisable um, I'll just try to demonstrate something to you here uh, we'll need a good leader here what would be a good leader someone with evasion would be good yeah that's the best we have like let's take that guy he's young and he's evasion and he's kind of quick Let's fly him over here. I guess we want to build maybe a corvette, but we cannot afford these, so... Let's just send our fleet over and try to kill that space monster here. Our construction ship is building here. Very nice. Ah, space monster has left. Now, what you can do is with the space monsters, and with all the ships that are accessible everywhere, um, of other civilizations when you're at war with them kill these and then you'll gain some debris and that debris Also gives a timed special project here We'll also activate this It can only be done after that at the start. It was um, Possible that you could research all at once So um You can kill them and then gain some valuable research information from the debris it will give you access to new technologies yet that you have to research like it will have some stuff in the progress bar already sometimes and you'll have access to it like so it opens up access to new technologies that you wouldn't otherwise have access to especially with space monsters and it gives you research to new weapons you can also there are some research um like things like like you have armor one then you need to research armor two then armor three and so on and they are these are all consecutively better but you might like kill some enemies you have armor one you're not researching it you kill some enemies they had armor three 
you can directly go and research armor 3 and then armor 4. So this is uh, very valuable in, in research um, from debris. The same goes with space monsters, but you will have access to weapons and um, shields and stuff that is otherwise not accessible to you. So if you want to kill these, then go for it. You can also go for um, like friendly choices and you'll get, often get bonuses there or edicts available to you. But um, you also have that hard-coded technology stuff. Special project find. complete. Now we have finished the special project. We found the ancient mining drones, and like there is, let us see what they are made of. This would be like going for the debris, and then you you would get something of these like a special laser, the mining drone laser, or you could establish a listening post, and that would give you something situation else. log updated. So you could theoretically um, lead some kind of uh, warlike research dominion where you always specialize in taking things apart and then researching the debris. So um, yeah, that's that's also a kind of research that we are not probably not used to here, but which is a very, very good option as well. Now some last things here. You, you can uh, see in the on the map which systems you have surveyed already and we're still surveying here um, may soon be done like this is displayed in gray all the systems that are displayed in gray can still be surveyed and you'll soon see how yeah the leader gained the level like he's carefree very good or pretty good for um, ship captains Better anomaly research speed. He has leveled up already, you can see. Uh, now these guys, let's have a look at them. They are not very close to level ups. So this is the last thing you should consider. Like if you're sending out guys on a ship and on survey, surveying or researching anomalies, they will gain experience much faster. So you can give these guys an apprentice time in the ship, let them get some easy surveys and easy uh, anomalies to research, and level them up more quickly, as their research speed then goes up a lot quicker. Like, they have one star now, they get research speed plus 2%. If they have five stars, which is the maximum, they get plus 10% research speed on top of everything they have. So, definitely advisable. This guy has already 4% research speed on everything now. And um, if he's like 5 stars, then he m he's nearly as good as this guy, who has the special talent Spark of Genius. So um, if you're really going uh, for it, then just go for safe systems that you can survey and you'll gain experience in no time with these guys, um, with your researchers. If you're, they're just sitting in their labs, this process is taking very, very long time, so you shouldn't do it like that. Um, yeah, and <laughs> if you do all this, you'll have a very, very good start. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> so if you if you had found, of course, um, like some some world around here, construction complete, colonizable instantly by your race. Uh, by your empire, then of course you you wouldn't go for these investigations of aliens because yeah, then you would go for like give me that technology, I want to build the colony ship, and then start up something new there if it's a good planet at least. Now let's see what I want to show you. Um, Special project complete. How? Let's see. Hunting them would be a net, lo net loss anyway. So if you if you're a researcher, you have access to special um, materialist quest choices, um, which can lead to very unique stuff that your um, <coughs> civilization gets. In this case, frequency tuning, and we can also research these mining drones now. Now we would have a modifier somewhere here, let's see. Uh, 
Yeah, somewhere there would be a modifier of frequency tuning for a time. System survey complete. That. And it would give us 10% on top of this. Society research. And now you can see we have surveyed the Thought Spark system. And it's now white, so you can go to the next system. If you're really going for like the, the strategy I described. Oh, come on, give me the ship. Then maybe you should go for this system quickly, because it's outside of your borders. And if you meet anyone, just close the borders on them. If you're confrontational, then it will give you a lot more anomalies um, in the long Special run. Special project complete. If you uh, like always go for these neutral guys, uh, neutral stars first to research. And of course, if other empires haven't closed their borders to you, then you can go into their borders and try to find some stuff there. But it is very unlikely that you get a lot of that. Like, um, just stay with the neutral ones first. It will have a higher chance of gaining anomalies. Uh, I believe that is all um, about the methods, but there's still like uh, a ranking I've made, like I've linked it on the blog, you can find it there. I'll also read it to you, like um, what I, I think are the best leaders you can get here. So let's look at the scientists, or so the scientists' leader. Situation log updated. So you have these skills, right? What would be good skills? Like, there are skills for researchers that are good, there are skills for ship captains that are good. Best skills for researchers are sentient AI, which gives you like 10% bonus in research, and also some speed for your ship captain duties. Um, then would be this, the spark of genius. We have one of these here. 10% research speed on everything. Pretty great. And the custom AI, which gives you 5% research speed on anything and more speed for your duties here um, in the in the research ship department uh, then we would go for maniacal which gives you just a flat 5% on every research you get then would go for the expertise ones you have here expertise biology expertise particles that would give you a 10% on a very specialized area like you're not getting it on like the, the whole area of physics just um, on an, on an area of the physics, like in this case particles, but particles can also pop up here or here. And then I also already said that, swap them to gain the full bonus. Then we'd have traits like adaptable or resilient. Let's see if there's someone here who has that. I'll just have a look here sometimes. Yeah, eager. There's minus 33% leader recruitment cost. It's just a cheaper leader. It's not very good. I wouldn't take it only if you're really bleeding for influence and if you have no other choice than to get the leader via this, then go for eager. Otherwise, it's not a good choice. So other traits would be like adaptable, which gives you uh, quicker like experience growth here. And it's okay to get, but it's not really that good. Like, if you know how to, like with this science ship survey trick, um, then you can level up these guys very, very quickly. So it isn't really a big bonus. Same goes for resilient, which just gives you like 25 more years to live to the scientist. It is helpful as well. Pro maybe a little bit more than adaptable, but you, you will have scientists for longer. But really, a bonus on your research is much more valuable, or like a ship speed, or like research speed is much more valuable as well, especially at the start. So what would be good ship captain stuff? This is a good example here, but much better are things like, like there's carefree, which gives you more speed. There's also careful. Careful makes you 10% more likely to research an anomaly instead of failing it. That is very good. Meticulous gives you a chance, a 10% higher chance to find an anomaly, which is also very, very good. These are my top two. 
And there's Archaeologist, which gives you high bonuses in on anomalies and on anomaly research, but only for ancient civilizations, which is, I'd rank this as uh, third because it's often very uh, hard to determine if you're encountering a, an archaeological uh, civilization site or something else. Like, it's often not clear. It might be a meteor, but that meteor might be a ship in disguise. Then you have Carefree like this, which gives you more research speed. And then, then you have Roma, I, I think we just saw that, which increases the survey speed. That is also very helpful, especially if you want to uncover quickly like a colonizable world. Um, you have you have to uncover it, you have to survey it first before you can uh, settle there. So you would like a Roma to have there, like to go around there and roam everything in a very quick fashion that is very very good as well but like it's careful and meticulous and archaeologists are much better like now for um adaptable resilient and eager like it's the same for the researchers you wouldn't like take these if you have better traits like this um, and that's all that's going to be said about these traits i wish you a good start with your empire good research and happy gaming see you on the channel